Magna Carta by Amice MacDonald This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Narrator read by Denny Sayers Magna Carta in One Act Characters Represented King John Read by Rob Board Stephen Langton, Archbishop of Canterbury Read by Beth Thomas William Marshall, Earl of Pembroke Read by Larry Wilson Robert Fitzwalter, Castellan of London Read by Delde Pignoroles Henry de Bowen, Earl of Hereford Read by Stephen Simonides Roger Bigod, Earl of Norwalk Read by K. Hand Sayer de Quincy, Earl of Winchester Read by Shakira Eustace de Vesci, Northern Baron Read by Elizabeth Clatt Roger de Rose, Northern Baron Read by April Walters William de Breos, Baron of Welsh Marches Reading by Mark Nelson William de Breos, Eldest Son of the Former Read by James Curran Gilles de Breos, Bishop of Hereford, Second Son of William de Breos Read by Christine G. Fox de Brote. Read by Brad Philippone. Gerald de Athes. Recorded by Michael Early. Mercenaries of King John. Two Londoners. First Londoner. Read by Dean Spilius. Second Londoner. Read by Marianne. Two Monks. First Monk. Read by Rachel. Monk Two. Read by Zames Curran. A Canon of St. Paul's Read by Newgate Novelist A Messenger Read by Abbaye Maud de St. Valerie Wife of William de Breos Read by Lydia Act One, Scene One, About the year 1208 In a castle of William de Breos On the Marches of Wales Scene Two, August 1213 London St. Paul's Cathedral Scene 3 About Easter 1215 In a castle of King John Scene 4 June 15th 1215 Runnymede The incidents of the meeting held at St. Paul's in 1213 have been slightly interwoven with later events as that of the Barons' Assembly at St. Edmund's in the following year. The hostage demanded was the grandson, and not the son of William de Breos. Magna Carta Prologue, spoken or chanted by one of the monks. Lo, now is virtue fastly bound, while evil walketh wide and free, and proud oppression sitteth crowned, and homeless wanders, charity. When shall our sorrows have an end? When will this trouble God amend? For now is justice bought and sold, her sword upheld by villainy, and truth is counted less than gold, and pity pleadeth bootlessly. When shall injustice have an end, and God his law and counsel send? Now is our day become as night, the battle is for them who flee, and might through all the land is right, which hath none other sovereignty. When will he help from heaven send? When will our trouble God amend? Act One, Scene One, about the year 1208. A room in the castle of William de Breos. A chair and a table on right. Shield hanging on wall. Enter left, Maud de Breos, leading her eldest son, followed by Fox de Brote and Gerald de Athes. She comes center, turns left, and faces the two men. Son stands right, beside her. Away with you! Why should I give my son as hostage to the king? Fox shows piece of parchment. If you know why, then read the king's word against your husband. Nay, I'm not clerk to read it, but I know how it is set. 
for that which the king gave him in Limerick is William de Brouse bound to render five hundred marks a year. This he hath not done. The king complains neglect of aid and service from a vassal to whom he gave rich lands, fair castles— Which he held bravely for the king. It was but fitting recompense. I recompense for faithful service. Aside or gifts perchance to silence the tongue of one who knew perforce too much of his dark counsels allow if we have served him well why should we yield up our eldest son as hostage gerald creeps towards maud and whispers aloud because the king doth doubt your husband's loyalty enter left william de Breos and his son giles de Breos. who doubts my loyalty i have served the king as well as any man I am ready to make answer to the king at any place and time which he will name. Who dare make accusations against a noble and honourable house? The lords de Brows have been faithful, e'en since Duke William's days. Nathless, William de Brows, the king, doth doubt you, believes that ye are leagued with his enemies. He suffers no uncertain servants to dwell on the marches of rebellious Wales. The king requires security from you, a hostage to hold fast in one of his castles. Gerald, aside. To hang on the first oak tree, if you should prove a rebel. He now commands that without let or hindrance you give up your eldest and well-loved son. Seizes young de Breos. William puts out hand. This is a hard command. I will not go with you. Ye shall. Drags him left. Come. Gerald sets on him. Maud rushes forward. He shall not take him. William, aside. To wife. Think you we dare so openly defy the king? Fox hold son. I dare. To husband. Oh, do not let him go. He never will return. To Fox. He shall not have him. I will not give my son into the hands of a king who foully murdered Arthur, his own brother's child. You say this? Yea, verily I say this. I, Maud de Breos, say this of King John. And you shall bitterly repent your words. Aye, indeed, you and yours. Wife, what have ye done? I have but spoke truth. Ye know it too. Ye know that black deed done twixt Eve and Cockcrow, not six Aprils since in ruin. Raises arms. All the world shall know it. Fox bows mockingly. I will be careful that the king hears your hearty answers. Gerald aside. He will devise, methinks, some curious recompense for you. William turns away. Wife. Your rash words will cost our lives. Maud clasps hands. Nay, nay, my lord, upbraid me not. Ye still are silent. Husband, sons, have ye less courage now than I? Defy a king who is a murderer. Silence! Ye are mad. If I am mad, then tis with bitter grief, with wrong done unto you, my lord. Alas, your rage is bootless. Nay, it is not. Turns on Fox and Gerald. Now get you hence, folks de Breat, Gerald de Atheus, outlandish low-born hirelings. Insolent woman, we are servants of the king. I know you both, mud of Pontheu and dust of Normandy, you to insult a noble baron in his own castle, hence out of my sight. We will not stay, nay, never, but go straightway report your sayings to the king. I vow that you and yours shall rue this day. Fox and Gerald go out left william sinks down in chair buries face in his hands two sons stand behind on right whisper anxiously together from time to time now all is lost lost utterly alas rings hands our glory is departed and the wealth the lands i strove for year by year all lost looks up Unhappy wife, what have ye done? Maud kneels beside him. I have done naught wherein there was offence to you. Turn not from me, dear my lord. Takes his hand. Ye know that ye were doomed to his displeasure long ago. E'en while the king put gifts into your hands, he hated you. You knew too much of Arthur's death. All your long service and friendship are worth naught beside your crime of being honest, of having hands unstained by innocent blood. Look not with anger on me. To-day I have only brought myself within the ranging of his fury, where you were before, and I shall fall with you I reck not how. We'll all die together, if need be. 
Who comes in haste? Enter left, William Marshall. William rises. The Earl of Pembroke. William de Barros, I counsel you to leave your castle and to flee. The anger of the king is hot against you and your family. Come with me now to Ireland, where the de Lacys will receive and shield you. We're hunted, driven. Marshal to Maud. I do advise you to keep silence now. William to Maud. Aye, indeed. To Marshal. Think you our danger presses? Verily the king cometh against you. Is not three leagues hence. He bringeth fire and sword along with him. Know you the cause of his coming now? Sooner inquire why lightning, whirlwind, and the thunderbolt do come. Stay not for read or question. Take what gold you have, and haste unto the coast, where I have boats in readiness. Ere it be dark, ye must be on the sea. This castle will fall into his hands. He can make my proud towers lie even with the grass. Alas! Methinks you are doomed. I knew I should not long escape, and certain rash words to his messengers have hastened on our ruin. Come, wife and son, there's naught but flight. Takes out bag of money. What gold and treasure we have stored, we'll take. Maud wraps veil around her. Thus forced to creep like thieves from our own castle and domain. Mother, we have no choice. Take comfort. Many a brave knight has fled the country in these troubled times. William takes down shield. Troubled, ay, good sooth, could the skies look more hard? We will to Ireland. Marshal, aside. I pray that even yonder ye be not trapped and slain. William draws sword. With this sword, since I was made a knight, I have served the king. I fought for Richard. Peace be to the lion-hearted. Then, by the wrath of heaven, was I doomed to fight for John. To marshal. For him, ye know, I did mine utmost, for a craven and a murderous king who turns from battle, though he turneth not from slaughter. Sheed's sword. Oh, I have done with all that's past. I break allegiance to a lord whom men call soft sword, though heaven knows his heart is hard. When I return to England, if I do return, I come with this sword drawn against the king. Aye, against the king. I'll burn his lands. To Gilles. Farewell, good son. Hie you to France for safety. These are ill days for bishop as for baron. Perilous for clerk and soldier who are not servants in the devil's pay. Farewell, my father, mother, brother. Get you to safety with the good Earl of Pembroke, who is still our friend, Bishop of Hereford am I, the mournful shepherd of a sad and scattered flock, and yet as such I bless you. Lifts his hand, they bend their heads. And as son, kneels, I beg your blessing. Father and mother lift their hands. Now fare you well. I pray ye fall not victims to the fury of the king. I think we shall not ever meet again. If we must die, then may our dying call down vengeance from on high. May it cry out for mercy on this miserable land. William de Breos, wife and son, go out left with William Marshall. So I am left alone, alone. All fled, and the earth darkens, and a tide of woe arises day by day. Oh, most unhappy country, shame in the eyes of all Christendom by the most shameful king. Cursed laid under interdict with church despoiled the archbishop in exile we cry how long how long the noblest barons are treated as slaves taxed unlawfully dragged over to the seas to fight the losing battle of catif evil is crowned in england good is dead where shall i turn or go for help alone there standeth stephen langton the archbishop he is a rock on which god builds a pilot for his ark, almost overwhelmed with waves, a start to herald day spring in our night. I will go to him. He perchance can save our course ere all be lost. Goes out left. Scene two, August twelve thirteen, London, Saint Paul's, a throne in centre, with benches or seats on either side. Enter left. A monk and a canon of St. Paul's. 
"'Tis a great gathering in your cathedral to-day. Verily. The archbishop, late returned from exile since the king made truce with holy church, hath summoned many here. Know you who come? I saw the roll of those who meet to-day within our walls. Our bishop, William of London, will be here, and Peter of Winchester, Eustace of Ely, Giles of Hereford, bishops, abbots, priors, I, and mark you, many barons of the realm. A goodly company, I trow. They will be here anon. Touches Cannon's arm. Why, think you, they are come together now? Is it not to talk of church dues, atonement for despoiled revenues? Ay, perchance, and yet methinks there's other business afoot. Armed barons come not only to talk of Mother Church in her distress. They've other work, I think. I pray that help is nigh for this poor country and for the Church, that gates of Tartarus may not prevail against us. Goes out, left. Exegat Deus et Dissipenter in Amici Aegis. Goes out, left. Enter, left, Robert Fitzwalter, and Eustace de Vesci. Well met, Eustace de Vesci. You and I are home from exile none too quickly. You from Scotland, I from France, where we fled for safety. Faith, the world wags strangely. The impious king is pardoned, and hath given his kingdom to the Pope. We've come home to find, I think, our wrongs increased. What hath the king done in our absence? My Baynard's castle, here in London, burnt my lands in essex wasted woods warrens fisheries i have no less complaint enter left robert de ross will ye not bear witness robert de ross that we barons of the north are likewise driven to extremity ay indeed why should we give unjust scutage be urged beyond endurance we northerners do well to say him nay to de Vesci. your own the castles in ruins burnt in your absence by the king that is my welcome home writ large in flames my towers are ruined i shall laugh bitterly to see the north wind blow the ashes of my roof tree to and fro we'll fan some flames and light another fire see who now comes the earls of hereford of norfolk and of winchester enter left henry de bowen roger begot sayer de quincey can we not also kindle fires roger begod will your east country burn for us i guess your meaning verily twill burn it is as stubble ready for the flame is't not de bohan truly good friends the west is ready too and here comes one who hath as great a cause for grief as any of us here enter left gilles de breos head shrouded in his mantle sits right ah I have grief which almost robs me of a tongue to speak. Who can tell the ruin of our house? Who declare our vow? Your father, William de Braus, is exiled? Exiled, ay, exiled. Begged, dead. Your brother? Mother? Dead. Rises and approaches him. How dead? Shall I whisper, Eustace, in your ear how more de Braus in her son did die? Whispers. De Vesci starts in horror what starved nay was it so slowly day by day done thus to death in the castle tower oh enemy of nature john are there no swords to avenge the wrong i never can forget or justice to calm my grief distracted mind i trow there shall be here's my sword i'll fight and i and, and i, I. begod lifts sword we all will fight if he refuse redress who will guide our counsel set forth our wrongs before the king enter left archbishop langton with william marshall two monks and canon with a parchment stephen the archbishop he shall speak to us to langton hail holy father now at last brought to your flock in england langton stands center lifts right hand all bow their heads blessing upon you all my sons my heart hath yearned for you when as an exile i lived across the sea watching praying for the sheep i might not feed or guide pleading at rome for our poor church gilles kneels right at his feet langton places hand on his head i know your griefs almost past bearing 
and i fain would carry all your woes my children wear out in mine own body all the sorrows of the land if that might be we ask your counsel father how shall our wrongs be set right if the king will not hear us shall we not rise burn harry ye shall not fill the land with war and wild confusion rebellion lawless fighting man against man as twas in stephen's time when the poor cried in vain saying god's saints did sleep the saints sleep now marshal points to langton nay eustace they do watch continually for us langton seats himself in centre monks cannon jeels behind him marshal de vesci de ross de quincey on right de bowen and bigot on left de vesci aside to de ross were it not better that a soldier counselled us this is no hour for mild reed or mercy de ross rises verily it should be war war i have a wrong i will avenge i have a greater wrong than yours i trow if ye fight each man for his own vengeance ye will fail and all be brought to naught remember that the king hath riches many followers still and hirelings from abroad see that ye act together truly all else will fail remember your allegiance that shall be broken only in extremity we must restore good laws and customs that alone will help us hearken all of ye we hearken did ye hear how when i absolved the king at winchester tis scarce a month ago i made him swear that he would do away with unjust laws and would recall good laws and make them to be observed within his kingdom truly we remember this here in this cathedral where we are gathered has a charter of the first henry now been found by which if you desire you may bring back your long lost rights and former liberties that were a prudent course where is it langton to cannon bring forth this charter takes roll from cannon here did henry son of king william promise when he was crowned to rule well and lawfully fitzwalter rises if we had aught like this it would be well de quincey rises ay others rise barons of england if ye could win a charter such as this and maybe wider our country would revive and live marshal rises my lord you shall set forth a charter for us now and i and every man who wishes well to england and her king will urge the king's acceptance of the same if i do so then must ye all stand together and uphold the honour of the church and each one of you do justice to your men mark this as ye would have the king deal rightfully with you rises only if he refuse shall ye make war upon the king will you swear to this we will, we will. and fight if need be for our charter if we are forced to battle father who shall lead our host fitzwalter is a brave and valiant soldier would you have fitzwalter for your leader i say so. so langton to fitzwalter if you are called to fight for this our cause be called the marshal of god's army and of the holy church fitzwalter kneels centre before langton may i be worthy rises i vow before the archbishop in this holy place that i will maintain the charter and if the king refuse will fight for it till death lifts sword de bowen steps forward and so i swear lifts sword until with his own seal the king confirms what we require and i the same de vesci moves centre and i remembering the flames of alnwick and my blackened lands his hand on sword the barons of the north so speak de quincey lifts sword i earl of winchester do swear with hatred for a coward and a faithless lord deep in my heart gilles comes forward though i am priest not soldier i will go with you for those who died unpitied i will swear lifts arm father mother and brother witness me ye all are bound by oath 
all raised swords on either side of Langton, who stands centre, with hands clasped. We are all bound by oath. I will uphold your cause before the king. I have no fear. I will guide you because I love this land and have been made a shepherd and a father to you all. I vow to never leave you. Go in peace. Raises hand. All bend their heads. I will set forth your charter, and William Marshall, since you are older, wise above the rest, and most faithful, you shall go with me to the king, and we will show him what you all demand. With earnest words we will strive to win his true consent. Langton goes out, left, followed by Gilles de Breos, Cannon and Monks, William Marshall, Fitzwalter, de Vesci, de Ross, de Bowen, Bigod, de Quincy. Scene 3, about Easter 1215. A courtyard in one of King John's castles, a couch centre, table beside it, right, with food, cups, etc. A few straws, or rushes, scattered on ground. Enter left King John, a roll of parchment in his hand, followed by Fox de Brote and Gerald de Athes. John flings roll on ground. Ugh, demands of the barons, redress of ills, ah, oh, none of them, throws himself down on couch. To Gerald. Fetch me wine. I'm hot and weary with this westward march. Haste and bring me wine. Exit left, Gerald. To Fox. Thou. Hast thou done my bidding and sent spies to watch the rebels? I have, my lord. John calls. Here, bring the wine. I'm parched and dry. I'm a rain on the fool to keep me waiting so. Re-enters hastily Gerald with wine. He pours it into goblet, which John snatches. Give me to drink. Drinks. Nay, more. Drinks again. Away with thee. I've other work for both of ye to do. I shall need more soldiers from whence you came. My lord, I can raise many men across the sea to serve you. And I also. But they, like us, are poor and needy men, my lord. <laughs> Who want their wages as ye do, I catch thy meaning. Well, I can pay you all, ye curs. I have money and more gold I mean to get. Methinks the clergy and the Jews alone can pay you. Clergy and Jews! <laughs> "'Tis all the same to me which do it. "'I have many means as fines, imprisonment, "'and fetters to find money when I need it. "'Have I not?' "'That is true, my lord.' <laughs> Do "'Dost thou remember how I had ten thousand marks "'from the Jew at Bristol?' "'Verily?' "'That stubborn one did love his gold, "'and, day by day, a tooth was drawn "'until the ten thousand marks were duly paid.' Go, both of you, and learn what news my messengers do bring. Fox and Gerald go out left. John rises and paces up and down. Oh, I will force the barons to obedience once again. De Brows can arise no more. I've silenced those shrewd tongues. I now will teach De Vesci... Fitzwalter and their friends a lesson which they will not soon forget. Re-enter. Left. Fox. My king, the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Earl of Pembroke are without and crave to speak with you on weighty matters. A plague upon them! Stephen Langton, would thou hadst followed Archbishop Hubert Walter to the grave, I hate thy gentle cunning, subtle meekness, proud humility. Evil light on thee. To Fox. Bring them before me here. Sits down on couch. Fox, aside, as he goes out. I thought their coming would much anger him. He hates the archbishop as viper's blood. Goes out left. 
John throws himself back on couch. Oh, I am weary. When shall I feast at leisure in my halls, or follow the tall deer through silent woods, and then, hot with the chase, among my dogs, lie down by hidden fountains in the shade? Come quickly, Stephen Langton, come and get you gone, you and all such disturbers of mine ease. Enter left, Stephen Langton and William Marshall, followed by Fox. Langton raises hand. Greeting and blessing unto you, my king. Marshall bows low. Blessing? Do I need more? I have lately had the blessing of my lord the Pope. Whose most unworthy servant in this land I am. Enough. You are installed at Canterbury now. You have your lands and wealth and should be satisfied. We will not talk of holy church today. I have no mind to do so. Kill a stag or fly a hawk were nigher to my present pleasure. So speak some other message briefly and have done. Drinks wine on table. Langton approaches John. Marshall stands left. Fox right. My lord, we come on matters which concern you closely. You will not send me hence when I come to plead in the name of all your realm. Langton, you have ever consorted with my enemies. My king, I am your friend and faithful servant. Takes parchment roll from floor. Your people should not be your enemies. I counsel you to use your wisdom and agree to their most just demands. Holds out parchment. John snatches it. Unjust demands, say I. My liege, tis little new or strange the barons ask. New or old, I care not. Their asking's are vain dreams, supported by no plea of reason. Ay, I've heard what they desire. Why did not the barons among their unjust demands ask to take my kingdom also? My lord, we beseech you now to keep that kingdom, not to let it fall in other hands. Marshal kneels. Truly, my king. By righteous rule and justice alone can you do so. You will not keep the kingdom otherwise. I'll keep it as I will, no other way. Marshal rises. My lord, the barons are roused to great anger. Are they so angered? I will let them see my wrath. I'll lay their castles low, burn, waste. Remember, it is not long since I absolved you at Winchester. With the kiss of peace and tears of joy, you were received and made a Christian king once more. By that right, and by the hallowing and anointing of the day when you were given high power and holy trust, so that men should love and honour you above your fellows, by these I do conjure you now to hearken to your people's prayer. Puts hand on John's arm. Set up the rightful laws, drive hence these foreign hirelings. Looks sternly at Fox. Who make war on your own subjects. Be king of England once again. John shakes off Langton. Springs up. I will be king of England. There you speak truth. I will be king and not a slave. Think you I will listen to commands from my own vassals? Crushes parchment roll. Out of my sight, ye traitors. To Marshall. You and your fellow baron shall rue this. To Langton. Nay, I care not who ye be. Archbishop, cardinal, I here defy you. Away, and tell the barons I will punish them for this. Marshall moves left. Alas. My lord, you move me to much sorrow by your words, which we must faithfully report unto the barons assembled now at Brackley. Say what ye will, I care not. I pray some future day you may be moved to give us better hearing. Langton and Marshall go out left. Nay, never, sooth-tongued priest. You one and all shall smart for this. Drinks. 
to their destruction do i drink to fox pledge me sirrah fox drinks have any messengers returned whom i sent forth to bring us tidings of our enemies go and look forth fox goes left and looks out one cometh even now my lord he rides in haste who is't gerald althes he has returned my lord john paces up and down will he bring evil news nought but black tidings the stars are cursed that rule this day fox goes left he comes my lord enter left gerald uh, what news what news of the rebels then slay me if i do not speak bad tidings kneels spare me john strides up seizes him by neck play me no tricks speak out thy news or i will shake it from thy throat let's go gerald gasps <gasps> tis so the barons are encountered brackley gathered in force for battle what gerald rises trembling scarce do any remain upon your side tis said they have two thousand knights foot and horse soldiers archers crossbowmen all fully armed and bound by oath against me they are if you refuse so resolved in battle to the uttermost i can withstand them all crush them as i have done before nay alack your castles will all be taken now scarce seven knights are left to you tis said the men of london mean to op their gates unto your enemies i'll get more soldiers from across the sea the pope shall ban them rome is far off it would be long ere you could get more men hired from abroad to fight your battles fox and gerald draw together right john flings himself on couch what have they all deserted me am i betrayed and defied the mock of priests of every varlet in the baron's camp oh how i hate you all would i could bend you as i do these rushes picks up breaks and bites rushes and straws grind all to nothing as i do these straws flings them away some time i will outwit them be it so if they have victory to-day to-morrow i Falkers de Bruyte, uh, ride in haste and bring back the archbishop and the earl tell them that i will hear their prayers grant their charter fox amazed is so yea it's so gape not in amazement go tell them that we will be gracious now we will appoint a-day a place for meeting somewhere beyond our castle on the thames to hear them my lord be gone and give my message i will grant their charter <laughs> fox goes out left i'll say i do it for the sake of peace the exaltation and the honour of the realm <laughs> and do they think i'll keep the charter let them dream to gerald go after them and see my message is delivered instantly gerald goes out left one day they will rue it rises i will scourge the land for this is it in springtime then i'll take the seed cut down the hedges so that forest beasts devour their lambs and patient husbandry in harvest i will burn the standing corn the whole land shall hunger till my wrath is spent goes out left scene four monday june fifteenth twelve fifteen runnymede a throne placed centre a table in front of it a low bench in front of the table enter left two monks and canon they carry parchment ink horns pens and one has a taper then come robert fitzwalter 
with Banner of London, Henry de Bowen, Roger Bigod, Sayer de Quincy, Gilles de Breos, Eustace de Vesci, Robert de Ross, two Londoners, Fitzwalter, Stand Centre. This meadow, Runnymede, beside the Thames, is named our meeting place, where we now attend the coming of the King and the Archbishop and the Earl of Pembroke. Here we set up our standard. To Messenger. Read forth the names of the chief barons who are here or coming to this place. Messenger reads from scroll. Robert Fitzwalter, Castellan of London, Chief Banneret of the City, Baron of Dunmo, and Marshal of the Baron's Army. Here am I. Henry de Bohun, Earl of Hereford and Constable of England, stand you here? Yea, with all my men. Roger Bygod, the Earl of Norfolk? Ready. Prepared. Speak, said the Quincy, Earl of Winchester. I and my following, fully armed. Eustace de Vesky, Baron of Northumberland, Guardian of Durham? Ready to fight in sooth, as is de Ross and many another northerner. I and all my men from Holderness. Let each man grasp his sword. We are prepared. We stand together. I, I we stand, stand together. together. Enter left, a messenger. See you. A messenger comes from the king. My lords, at length the king approaches. Long hath been the debate touching peace with you and granting of these liberties. The archbishop hath prevailed on him with strong entreaty. Now do the trumpets sound here and along the river. The king is coming. Deveshi, aside. Methinks our line of battle, seen upon the banks of the Thames, gives force to his entreaties. Now do the trumpets sound here and along the river. The king is coming. Give answer loud. Hold high our banner. The archbishop who made the charter shall present it to the king. Enter left. King John. Stephen Langton, with the Great Charter, William Marshall, Fox de Brote, Gerald de Athes, John seats himself on throne. Barons, headed by Fitzwalter, stand right. On left stand Langton, next the King, the Monks and Canon. Marshall on extreme left. The King's Messenger, Fox, and Gerald, stand behind the throne. My lord, the barons, gathered from all parts of your kingdom, and assembled here at Runnymede, the place which you appointed, greet you true and loyally. De Vesci, aside. True and loyal if we have our liberties. If not... They here present this charter, wherein are found good laws and customs for the country, such as were upheld of old. Lays charter on table before John. I know they're asking. Langton, to barons. All that is contained herein hath been examined closely with the king. We have discussed and measured each matter in the charter. The charter, the charter, charter, the charter, the charter, charter give us that. John, aside. Rebels and dogs! Aloud. I grant it, I am minded to be clement. For peace and for protection of my kingdom, and by the advice of certain in the realm, as Archbishop Stephen Langton, William Marshall, Earl of Pembroke, and many whose names are written there, I grant the charter. Langton hands charter to first monk. Read. Monk reads. John, by the grace of God, King of England, Lord of Ireland, Duke of Normandy and Aquitaine, Count of Anjou, to the archbishops, bishops, abbots, earls, barons, justiciars, foresters, sheriffs, reeves, servants, and all bailiffs and his faithful people, greeting. Monk hands charter to Langton. Here are set forth some sixty-three and separate matters, beginning with the English Church, which shall be free to hold its rights and liberties uninjured. Gilles, aside. That not in vain our prayers have been. 
all the good laws and customs are to be maintained the heir shall take his heritage with no extortion the widow shall not be oppressed nor orphans robbed by those who guard their lands tis well the common pleas shall not follow the king's court but be held in one place whither all men may resort conveniently aye, 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 aye. Aye. the citizens of london londoners aside ah what, what? for london what for london the citizens of london shall have their ancient liberties and free customs as well by land as water and this is for all other cities boroughs villages and ports first to second londoner aside good tidings these scutage and age shall be just and only according to the tenants holding from the king Deveshi, aside taxes and grievous payments in lieu of battle service will not be forced the barons shall also deal justly with their men now hearken well save in certain instances as for the king's ransom if he is taken prisoner for the making of his eldest son a knight and for his eldest daughter's dower no tax or aid shall ever be imposed but by the common council of the kingdom may that be so for ever to this common council of the realm prelates and great barons shall be summoned by the king and all tenants in chief by his sheriffs and bailiffs aye, aye, aye. 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 for fines no man shall lose his means of livelihood the merchant his merchandise nor the poor man his wagon sheriffs and bailiffs shall not seize a free man's horses wagon or wood for the king's use without payment or consent which law by heaven's grace shall somewhat protect the poor hostages shall now be returned unscathed all foreign soldiers the names of many are writ here who came to make war upon the land are to be driven hence gerald aside our day is done what further aside i will find other soldiers full many other matters follow as touching rents and forests measures weirs trials and witnesses and mark ye well no free man shall be taken imprisoned dispossessed or banished save by the legal judgment of his peers or by the law of the land so be it ever. moreover the king hath said to no man will we sell to no man will we deny to none will we delay right and justice to barons twenty-five of the great barons of the land shall be chosen by you to see this charter is observed we will appoint them these liberties are ordained both for yourselves and for your heirs for ever nor king nor people shall disregard the law so the great charter closes hands it to monk in the king's words first monk reads sworn moreover as well on our part as on the part of the barons that these things above should be observed in good faith and without any evil intent john smiles scornfully witness the above named and many others langton turns to john will you be pleased my lord to lay your hand upon the charter john puts his hand on charter from which monk reads given by our hand in the meadow which is called runnymede between windsor and staines on the fifteenth day of june in the seventeenth year of our reign langton takes charter and places it on table before John. My lord, will you now set your great seal on the charter? Here is the seal. Aside. Would I had lightning in mine eyes to strike you all? The brown wax is on the strip of parchment, ready for the good round seal. The light. Warms wax with taper. The wax is soft. John impresses seal. All watch in breathless silence. Langton looks up. The seal is set. Tis done. There, I have put my impress on the wax. Aside. I'll cut my image deeper in your hearts. Springs up. There, take it. Take your charter, ye barons. Aside. And may it perish with you. Aloud. I go follow me not aside i fain would wipe you from my sight sweeps out followed by fox gerald messenger 
all bow low as the king goes out left langton to monks are the scribes ready here to make copies of the charter ready my lord i make a copy now for salisbury cathedral sits on right of bench and writes on his parchment and i for lincoln sits centre of bench and writes i haste to copy it for st paul's sits left of bench and writes let copies be quickly sent to canterbury and to each cathedral in the land ay and they shall be guarded well langton stands centre in front of table etc all the others grouped on either side he holds charter in his hands to-day we have fought a fight to-day we have sown good seed not for us perchance the fullest joy of harvest or of the victors who divide the spoil the whole accomplishment is yet far off though men in days to come may remember us sometimes bless us perhaps for that we strove to do we trusted god and we shall therefore rest in hope this charter which i hold within my hands parchment and ink and names of those who will be dust in a few years this charter will not perish it will stand type of a vow between the king and people noble kings will rise hereafter in this land worthy to be the nation's leaders barons of the kingdom people of england will ye do your part and hold the laws of freedom faithfully for yourselves in memory of those departed hence and for the sake of those who come hereafter fitzwalter kneels with standard i we will i i we, we will, will. Will you uphold the charter now? Come life, come death. If so, let each man put his hand upon his sword and cry, Amen, so be it. Barons put hands on swords. Monks, etc., raise their hands. Amen, Amen. 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 So, so, be be so be it. Langton, carrying charter, moves out left, followed by Gilles de Breos, monks, Cannon, Fitzwalter with the banner, Marshal de Bowen, Bigod de Vesci de Ross, Sayer de Quincy. A solemn and triumphal march is played as they leave the stage. End of Magna Carta by Amis MacDonald. This recording commemorates the 800th anniversary of the signing of Magna Carta, and is dedicated to our narrator, Denny Sayers, who died before the project was completed. Thanks for listening.